There are more than 7,000 operational satellites in orbit around the Earth that we rely on every day. And a new type of warfare emerging at the intersection of technology and exploration, cybersecurity in space. Nations and individuals are learning to disrupt, hack, or even destroy satellites and the data they transmit. But why does cyber matter in the first place? We live in a digital age, and nearly anything with software can be hacked and is susceptible to a cyber attack. In this episode, we're going to get an inside look at how to safeguard cyber threats in space. From testing in a vulnerability lab to the most comprehensive watch center of its kind, this is going to be cool. It's time to go Behind the Wings. Welcome to the Cybersecurity Education and Research Center at UCCS. Yeah, I'm excited to talk cyber. Well, let's get in it. What exactly is cybersecurity? Cybersecurity is basically securing data, which we all have a lot of. When we originally started with cybersecurity in the 90s, we basically worried about terrestrial, Earth-based networks. But we found out really quickly with the range of technology and how it was progressing, the space is a huge part of cybersecurity. And the vulnerabilities there and risks are huge. And you really can't now today have cyber without space. When satellites are up in space, the way that we communicate with a satellite is sending a signal up to the satellite to either tell it what to do, where to go, and how to do it. And so then that information the satellite gathers and brings it back down to us in a packet of signals. Anywhere along that, there can be interception of that information. The issue with space is that we want to secure that. We only want the people that need and own the information to be able to get that information. So we do things at the ground site that sends the signal. We do things on the satellite that then receive it and keep it secure. And then we do things when it transmits it back down. So all along that pathway, we want to make sure that security is part of what we do when we talk about cyber and space. Now we're in the Cyber Vulnerability Lab. With so many vulnerabilities in space, what is so important about testing not only the software, but the hardware before it even ends up in space? I mean, it's a lot harder to fix something once it's orbiting the Earth, right? Satellites have a lot of hardware built into them, and there's a lot of different components, which means there's a lot of opportunities for risk. You're correct, once you send it to space, you probably can't touch it again, and you definitely can't replace a part or fix it very easily, if at all. So making sure you've checked everything out before you launch it is critical, because if you launch it and it has a problem, that satellite may be done. It may not ever be useful, or it may not be able to do what it was intended to do. So before we take a closer look at this satellite, tell me a little bit about your experience and how you bring the hacker mentality now to increasing cybersecurity. My background is definitely in hacking and, and I'd like to think I was the good guy. Um, I spent 20 years in the Army where I was able to work with satellites and work in a lab to be able to test vulnerabilities for the Department of Defense. Being able to understand that the threats that the enemy is going to bring to you or that your adversary is going to bring, that's that hacker mentality. How can we break into this and what's the easiest or least noticeable way? That's the goal for any hacker is usually to be stealthy and to create their outcome without being caught. And so being able to evaluate all this hardware and software in a lab like this gives us the opportunity to simulate hacker behavior before it's really out there, ready to serve its purpose, and maybe getting broke into by real bad actors. Can we take a closer look and maybe get some examples of what you're looking for in here? What could maybe go wrong? What do we have on the table? What are we looking at? This is a small satellite that it is in its finished form. Uh, we've taken it apart, but it wouldn't look much different than this once it got into space. All of these panels have these holes that make it easy to attach computer chips and boards like this and depending on what you need the satellite to do when, when it's in space determines how many chips and how many panels you have to cover and how much compute power needs to go into this specific satellite. This one had some communications capabilities before we took it apart and there were three different radio sets that were built inside of it. Um, we took it apart to be able to investigate the actual components and the chips inside of each one of these green boards to check for any tampering or any products that were in here that were not asked for. <laughs> I mean, it's a small sat and the computer chips are even smaller. You can probably get a good sense just by taking it apart with your hands, but what else can you do to get down to the nanometer level and see, was it tampered with? Is there something we have to worry about? You can absolutely learn a lot from visually and manually inspecting these components, but if you want to inspect the nanometer level, you need special equipment and special technology, and we'll check that out in just a moment. So these are actual scans of the same CubeSat we were just looking at. 
What do these scans show us? So inside the satellite we were just looking at, there were three identical components. And so our intention is to identify if there's been anything different added to or changed about those three boards because they should be three perfect copies of each other. The colors represent different wavelengths of light and we look in both the optical and infrared ranges. And when we see color changes on here, that's where we would need to investigate to see if it was a malicious change or if it's just a manufacturing defect. Just a couple millimeters could make a huge difference. Yes, and in the uh, computer chip world, you know, you're talking millimeters, nanometers, micrometers, right? Those connections are definitely invisible to the naked eye. So it requires these types of scans to be able to measure that small distance very accurately. Satellites used to only exist at the nation state or government level, but it's been commercialized and space has been democratized. Anyone can access space now from a university to a private company. So with that, there's new introduction of risk and threats throughout the industry. Security by obscurity is no longer the opportunity to keep your satellite safe. You now have to build in technical controls and measure every risk that you can to make sure that your satellite is not going to suffer some sort of attack once it's in service. While the Cyber Vulnerability Lab can detect issues before space hardware goes live, in cyber, nothing is zero risk. In the Space Information Sharing and Analysis Center, Analysts monitor cyber threats in space and respond to vulnerabilities in real time. The space infrastructure is so far away, but the impact it has on our life on Earth is much closer to home. There's always still the potential that a vulnerability could still exist. It may not be there by design, but it could form over time. So we use the Watch Center to observe for when these vulnerabilities are being exploited. Think about satellites that are orbiting the Earth. Everything that's in space is actually connected to things on Earth. And we view that whole thing as an attack surface. There's infrastructure and capabilities coming from space that we need here on Earth, and our lives would be in entirely different if those capabilities were not protected. We need to be able to monitor and respond to threats as they happen. Think of the different types of attacks that are available. So we have ransomware attacks that threat actors use. Ransomware attacks steal data. They put a ransom up against an owner operator and they ask them to pay a large sum of money and they steal and compromise their data set. We don't wanna create a whole bunch of fear associated with this topic. This is what we do on a daily basis in this watch center is we monitor for threats against these systems and we report them to the owner operator so they know that these attacks are taking place. Can we take a closer look at what's going on? Yeah, absolutely. There's thousands of assets that our space ISAC analysts are monitoring on a daily basis, so we should go take a sneak peek and check it out. All right, let's see what's going on. So you're the watch center lead here. On your average day, you're looking at what's going on. What kind of things are you looking for? What kind of sources are you looking at? There's a lot of really good information out there and to um, identify what we're looking for, it requires a lot of different eyes. Um, and so that's why we have a watch center full of different analysts. So that's typically kind of the start of the day. Our job is to kind of go through all of that information and really pull out what's most important to the space sector. One of the biggest trends we see is ransomware. And so there's ransomware activity, you know, anywhere from 50 to 100 incidents every single day. And so part of our job is looking through those, identifying if there's any space companies, um, and then at that point kind of proceeding on to the next piece, which is when we actually investigate that issue. Ransomware can be very effective because critical infrastructure needs to function and can't go a long time without working so that those ransom demands can be met quickly. Today I was looking through a couple of different sources that capture dark web um, information. We've identified some significant activity and we know we need to find more information. So we're going to take a look now uh, at what our other analysts might be doing to support that effort. Did you find anything as you were looking up that threat actor? Uh, yeah, I did actually. So. What I found was that, you know, the threat actors, they were using spear phishing campaigns to execute their ransomware attacks, so. All right, so that's um, some really good information. We can definitely go from there. We can include that in our report uh, and look to push that out uh, very soon. So thank you for finding that. It's uh, really helpful information. Throughout the week, we may have identified 130 plus ransomware incidents. 
Um, that's just kind of the nature of the cyber activity that we're monitoring. Every day the attack surface for the space industry increases and the work that we're doing in here and the process that we just walked through is helping to counter that effect and bolster the defense of the entire sector. As cyber threats increase in their frequency and complexity, so must our understanding and capabilities to better protect the technology we use every day. We couldn't cover everything, so leave your questions and comments under the video and we'll get to as many as we can. And come to Wings Over the Rockies, check out our satellite exhibit along with more than 70 air and spacecraft. Now, you've made it to the end of the video, and if you subscribe, thank you so much. And if you don't subscribe, just subscribe already.